Hi, it's Stephen Smith. And one of the things I do is I'm a patron of a charity called Anna Kennedy Online. Anna Kennedy, uh, well, she has two children that live with autism. And I became involved with it about six years ago when I judged Autism's Got Talent. Uh, no, I don't have any family members that have autism, but all you need to do to be involved with the charity is to have a little empathy. And it has changed my life. Uh, one of the things that have also come out for me is I've become uh, a radio presenter along with an award-winning DJ who uh, I just adore, Aston Avery, who lives with autism. Now, um, Aston is just so talented, I can't begin to describe her. Uh, but on top of that, you know, we've got the best guests you can imagine. And, uh, but recently, uh, I asked for someone to join the show and they said to me, um, oh, uh, um, is it only people with autism that listen to this radio show? And I thought, this is what we're fighting against. We're trying to educate people that living with autism doesn't mean <laughs> there's anything different in your life. It's other people that seem to have an issue with it. And she didn't come on the show. Uh, I, I was a little bit shocked, uh, uh, but you know, we move on from it. But uh, uh, Astor's mum, who's a huge role model to me, Don Avery, has written a book called From Tears to Here. It, it's, a, it's moving, funny, uh, and intelligent. And if you can go get a copy, you'll adore it. And I'm lucky enough to have her joining me today to talk about the book and about herself, because lots of people don't know a lot about this big star. <laughs> to me, she's a superstar. Hi, hi welcome, Don. How are you? Hello. Hello, my Hello. love. Hello. How are you? It's great to speak to you, Stephen. Oh, it's, I'm, Good, thank you. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll, let's let's cut to. We'll, we'll get on to you in a bit, but this book's brilliant. And, uh, thank uh, you. Uh, so, uh, what made you? I mean, I, I I keep telling people they go, "Oh, I'd love to write a book," you know, <laughs> and you bump into them five years later, and they're still in the first chapter. Uh, is it? Is it <laughs> easy to do? Is it? It's it's a difficult thing. Yeah, very difficult. I mean. To be fair, I didn't just sit down and think, right, I'm going to write a book. Yeah. That isn't how it panned out, really. I know. <laughs> basically, I... Um, basically, I just thought to myself, you know, I'd started making little notes when um, we was going through some difficult periods with Aston. Yeah. And the, the book kind of evolved. <laughs> so from them notes, um, from the difficult times to him starting to achieve, I thought, actually, hey, ho. Oh, other parents need to see this. They need to understand, don't just give in. So that's kind of how the book evolved. Must mate, mate. <laughs> Don, Don, you're talking about, about difficult times. Uh, and uh, well, what, what was, you know, when you meet Aston, you know, anyone that knows Aston, it's just a, a, a great bloke, great laugh. Uh, and uh, I, I love, what, what are some of the difficult times you went through? Um, well, he was diagnosed at two and a half. Um, he was, his behaviour was very, very severe as a young, young child. Um, he was very frustrated, so he had what everybody nowadays calls a meltdown. His meltdowns was continuous. Um, he, and I knew back then there was like a lot of, you know, there was an awful lot of, um, like not restraining, what's the word? that there's an awful lot about him that um, them difficult times for him was in him. Sorry, Stephen, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm bad man. I didn't think this would happen. Um, it's, it's difficult to talk about, to be perfectly honest with you, um, because we've come over them times. But, yeah, he, he, was, he was continuously banging his head. He was self-harming. Um, and basically it was like he was trapped. This little boy wanted to get out. Um, yeah. And so it was our job to, do, to help him do so. But he also had a lot of health issues, which coupled with the autism made things so much more difficult. No, I'm so, you, yeah. no, I know you were a policewoman at one point, weren't you? So you <laughs> you're obviously a very disciplined person, but I mean, let's face it, yeah. I mean, You've got, you, 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 you've got this beautiful little boy in your hands uh, and it's your treasure and things don't look right. Uh, I mean, it, you know, you have to have some strength in yourself to be able to do this. It's not something that any, just anyone could be able to do, is it? 
No, not really. I mean, I, I'd done the police before Aston come along, so I'd had, as you say, I'd, I'd got that instilled in me, I suppose. Yeah. I had that um, determination. Um, we both did, because really for someone that lives with a, a young person with autism when they're first diagnosed, you need the entire family behind behind that person. And we was really lucky that it united us. For many, it's a completely different story. Aston was in a class um, in an autism resource base with six, there were six students in that class. Yeah. And to date, we're the only couple that are still a couple. The, the parents, yeah. Yeah, you don't yeah. think about that, actually, what affects the, the family unit, do you? You just sort of think... No, it's and it certainly out. does. I mean, I can honestly say now, like, you know, we went through good times, bad times, but we went through it. We fought for it. Aaron, in in this entire book, and when you read the book, Aaron's a hero. Yeah. Aston's yeah. brother. Yeah. Um, but it will take it's taken its toll on him as well. He's recently become a daddy's self. But I've got yeah, to I know. Oh, that's great. It's a little dream. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so with him becoming a dad himself, obviously that's opening up a whole new fresh type of feeling for him. So it affects every single member of that family. I think Don, quite important here is a lot of people listening. Uh, I mean, still to this day, uh, what is autism? Um, autism is it's it's a sensory, um, it's a social. It's I, I wouldn't say it's a disability. People call it um, a hidden disability. Yeah, There's no hiding it when meltdowns occur. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is no hiding. Of course, yeah. Um, but it's yeah, it's it's like a a, a a condition that affects the sensory, the social side of things. Um, you know, someone with autism may excel in something. They, you know, you, if you can channel into them something that they enjoy doing and bring a positive out of that, then that's great. They're, 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 they're like routine. Everything needs to be panned out for them. So therefore, the, the entire family is almost living each day on a routine. Yeah. And you have to kind of try and bring that routine to work for you. Well, so I'll give you a little incident here, Stephen. Yeah. Um, Christmas. <laughs> so Christmas, bear in mind, there's only 22 months between Aston, obviously my autistic son, and Aaron, his elder brother. Yeah. So at Christmas, As Aston, every day of the year, 364 days of the year, Aston's routine is he gets up, he bathes, he goes down for breakfast. Aaron follows that routine 364 days of the year. Yeah. Come yeah. Christmas Day, yeah. Aston yeah. still wants to get up, get bathed, go down for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and Aston's, Aaron's chewing at the bit. My gifts are downstairs, Santa's <laughs> And you're trying to appeal this young lad <laughs> away from the water. No, we're going down at Santa's bin. So you kind of, you know, you have to give and take for both. So yeah. we that that particular day, if Aston melts down because he's not had his bath as soon as he's up, hey ho, it's Aaron's day today. He gives in to you 360. Yeah. So you have to kind of try and make things work for you as a family. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, there's some there's been some funny times, I must be. <laughs> Listen, Don, uh, there, 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 there are people now uh, realizing there's something a little bit different about their child. Uh, uh, some some of the things you've given examples of. Where did you turn to for help? Um, I had, I must be, you know, my, my mum was amazing. Um, and Keith was working, we had a mortgage, we was doing... Um, Aston's behaviours was really extreme and it was actually by accident that we, we actually got some help. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he'd failed his one-year checkup, um, although it was done a bit later, about 18 months old. So he failed to meet the um, ratio that was expected of him at that time. So he was put forward that my dad had suggested about hearing. Um, maybe there was a, a problem with his hearing. So he was put forward for some intensive hearing tests. And whilst I was in the waiting area to see the consultant, um, mainly about the hearing, uh, there was other clinics running that day. And 
Aston being Aston had disrupted the entire waiting area and people was getting up leaving without their appointments, etc. And this really kind receptionist came back from behind her desk, sat next to me and said, look, you know, I can see things aren't, you're struggling here. He's, you know, he's obviously having a lot of issues. I explained he was there to have the hearing test. She was another consultant's secretary. Mm-hmm. And she said, would you mind if I put you on our list to see the, this consultant? Yeah. And I'll, you know, any help at this moment in time, this beautiful child in front of you is beautiful, but he's obviously struggling. Yeah. And now our family are too. And, and it basically led from there. And we met a wonderful doctor called Dr. Conlon. He, um, Aston obviously went on to pass all of his hearing tests. Yeah. Quite yeah. intense because he didn't comply with any tests. So he was actually put under anaesthetic and tests was done on, really? on the hearing mm-hmm. under anaesthetic because they, they couldn't do much more, you know, than and contain this struggling little child. So, um, yeah, we that kind of started from there. And Dr. Conlon brought many other special people into our world. We um, we also got contacted by social services, which is it's all in the book. It's quite a funny story of a geek and social services, but there are helpful people out there. As long as you, you know, we didn't have to look because Aston's behaviours was so extreme and so. Um, out there, people were coming to us recognising that this child was struggling. So, and of course, we you're very involved, you're involved in things now like Anna Kennedy Online uh, and uh, uh, and your other your own charity. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that, your involvement with the, the charities? Yeah, so um, we got involved with Anna. Aston's done uh, fundraising locally for many, many years. He, he won the Pride of Essex in 2016. And, um, oh, sorry, 2012, 2016 was the uh, NDA award. So in 2012, he won the Pride of Essex and we didn't know, but he'd been put forward by a local dance teacher because he'd excelled and was actually helping and assist in the classroom with other autistic children. So she, she put him forward. He actually won the overall evening. And with that prize came um, a cash prize. So he won a thousand pounds, which in 2012 was quite a lot of money. Yeah. Um, he decided to use that funds to, he just started to learn to DJ. So he was doing like, you know, little bits and pieces using other people's equipment. Actually, I think I, I'd like to buy my own DJ stuff. So he, he used the funds. We took him out. He bought bits and pieces to do his own little bit of fundraising, really, um, by DJing. So he gave up his time, he's done cancer research, local hospices, um, anyone locally that's been looking for DJ to help in any of their their own fundraising. So that kind of kicked into that. And from there, we, we, in 2015, he was invited up to go on the Autism's Got Talent stage with um, Anna Gordy Charity, which is where we met you. Yeah, it was amazing. (laughs) He's really good. And the most amazing team of people we, we could have ever come across. Um, and so from there, we kind of, um, we just felt at home. Aston had gone in there. He, from the minute he walked in, he felt like he was a part of something. We was made so welcome. And um, because he'd already been doing the fundraising, autistic and proud, yeah. we then decided to go on and do some more for Anna and her wonderful charity. Yeah. By doing that, it, it kind of led from there. We was asked to become charity champions, asked to become an ambassador for the charity. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the rest is history. We, we just enjoy all the events and spreading um, awareness. You've, met, you've mentioned dance uh, quite a bit. Uh, do you think mm. dance has helped with uh, Aston's, uh, Aston a great deal? A million percent. So what we, what we realised, and I, I would never... Um, preach to people, do this, do it my way, because my way works. All I can say is what worked for us and what worked for Aston. So Aston had always, from a very, very young age, been interested on stage, in in performing. So I I recall I've got a most beautiful photograph of him. His first time on stage, he was in um, an SLD school, uh, severe learning difficulties. Um, they'd put on a Christmas pantomime and we'd been told before the event that unfortunately Aston's not compliant. We've got this wonderful outfit for him. 
he's going to be a jewel in Aladdin. Yeah. But he, we can't get him to come on stage. So it's like, okay, you know, well, we've come to see this wonderful show. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. We've got all the other children to celebrate their achievements. Um, we were sat in the audience and all of a sudden, all the little jewels come out and you see Aston kind of pushed from backstage. As he's come onto the stage, he's looked around and seen an audience. And from that minute on, he clapped the entire rest of the pantomime. They couldn't get him off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> the headmistress come out and actually said, I do apologise, but this little lad was having none of this and now we can't. So they just quietly stood him to one side. He stood on the corner of the stage as the rest of the show was performed, clapping and enjoying every minute of performing. And that's kind of where it started. So we knew by then, going back to your original question, that the stage is where he wanted to be. So from it, with his, his illnesses, he had a full colostomy at 11 and his self-esteem was very low. He was going through a very difficult time. Um, so we was actually introduced to a local dance school. Over that, you just said at age 11, he had a full colostomy. Yes. I mean, my God, I mean, it's bad enough for an adult to go through something like yeah. that. Um, I mean, and Aston obviously co uh, copes brilliantly with that. But I mean, how, how did you, how did you even talk about subject at that time? Right, that that becomes another story in itself. So he he had he started having operations when he was four, um, and a year before the colostomy, uh, they'd attempted a new thing called an astoma. Yeah. So we used to have to tube Aston. To, to flush through his bowels because the muscles never worked in the bowels. Yeah. And then this tubing became so intrusive. Every 48 hours, we used to have to connect him up to a bag to flush the bowel through. You're talking about a very active 11, like 10 year old at that point. Yeah. Um, we had to make that decision that this isn't going to work. His bowels never going to get better. Yeah. We've tried everything the doctors have asked us and they gave us that choice to make. And to make that is a choice no parent wants to make for their, their child because we knew this was the point of no return. The fact that he had the colitis, the other things going on, he had no quality of life. There was no quality of life. He was constantly in and out of hospital, constantly um, geared up to a bag that we had at home. So we used to have to have like a saline bag He'd had many, many um, allergies at that point. So he'd been um, anaphylactic four times. Um, so we was at a point where we thought, you know, this decision is taken out of our hands, really. We've got to look at giving our son back some quality of life. And so we made that choice for Aston because he wasn't capable to know what that was about. But we just told him he was getting a new, he, he was getting a new bowel on his tummy. Yeah. It's all good, Aston. You're going to have a new power and it's going to be on your tummy. So, but maybe having uh, it, he, he, he didn't think of the way I don't really think about it. He thought about it uh, as something that was going to make him better. Yeah, we have we had to we had to make a positive out of a negative, which is as a family what we've tried to do all the way along. Yeah. Um very difficult when you're looking at a child that at that point I think weighed about four stone. Um, his hair wasn't growing, he was, uh, his skin was tinged yellow. You couldn't imagine that that was... Oh, this good looking um, lad here. <laughs> a, a very handsome young man. Oh. Absolutely <laughs> handsome. Oh, we, could talk, talk, we could talk for hours about this, but, but tell us, what's the difference between that and your childhood? What was your childhood like? I was very lucky, actually. I was, um, I was one of six, was and that? I was a baby. There's six of us. Yes. <laughs> um, both both sets of parents. My mum's one of eleven, <laughs> and my dad was one of six. So, and I was the baby of the family. So, ah, oh, hey, my my upbringing was great because I was spoiled not only by mum and dad because I was the baby, yeah. but my brothers and sisters always, you know. So I, I had a really lovely upbringing. I. Went to work with dad, done all the things you've done, little holidays away. And yeah, I had a lovely upbringing. So, um, 
Mum's a huge supporter anyway, isn't she? I mean, uh, she is, yeah. She was old. She's been absolutely <laughs> amazing. She, we couldn't have coped without her, really. She, yeah, she's. What do you and Keith do in your spare time when you're not uh, with Aston? Spare time? Yes, there's spare time. <laughs> I mean, I know you have a couple of holidays occasionally. And, uh, we do. We try to get one big holiday a year that's just for me and Keith. Yeah. Because every parent, um, when they're with a uh, child, young adult with um, additional needs, yeah. they all need a little bit of me time. And for us, we've always looked at that that holiday. We've done it since Aston was about 16. So we try and take at least a week, preferably two, yeah. <laughs> where we yeah. take ourselves somewhere extravagant and just, you know. So we like to do that. We've also liked to spend time with our, our little granddaughter. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Blessed with her. She's an absolute dream. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we've started, we've recently taken up walking since lockdown. So we try and get in our 10,000 steps a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah. Uh, we are, but there's not really a lot of free time because we're also doing, we do the team Avery stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so um, yeah. four times a year, we're, we're treating these local heroes. Yeah. Um, where Aston goes into schools and groups, or we're doing Zoom meets, we're talking, you know, all things autism. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we both work full time, don't forget. Good, good. Yeah, of course, <laughs> you work full time, which means you, I mean, there's, there's lots of parents that don't work full time who have kids that, that, that can't do holidays and things. But I, th I think what, one of the things you, 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 just, you just mentioned there is you both work full time on top of this. Uh, we do, yeah. And uh, and uh, you, know, you know, people imagine that you have nannies waiting about to help you and things like that, but you don't, do you? you no, you... no, no. I mean, we had my mum used to be very good um, when Aston needed twenty four seven care. Yeah. So I would still go out to work, yeah. um, and my mum would be here. But obviously, as she's got older, Aston's become more capable to be left a period of time. You know, I still wouldn't leave him overnight on his own or anything like that because Just um, he still needs that bit of prompting and things you, you've just seen uh, Harvey, Katie Price's son, move out on his own, and there's one or two other autistic kids that are, are going to move out on their own. Do you see a time when uh, when Aston will move into a flat on his own, or uh... we, we've we've broached that because he still he still has a social care package, so yeah. we we do have a PA and we get the respite for a holiday. Yeah. Um, so we, we discuss it every year. They do a, a review and they will bring up uh, assisted living. Yeah. Um, but Aston's enjoying life. Why move out of mum and dad's if you can stay? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but there's, been, there's a lot of conversation about it, I have to say, uh, about uh, living with autism and again, you move out from the family unit. Uh, and as I say, uh, um, so I'm, well, yeah, you're quite right. If, if you're happy, you must all stay with you. He's happy. <laughs> well, I'll change it. <laughs> no, it's probably not that, <laughs> that, that happy. Would um, assisted living do his ironing? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> do you do ironing? <laughs> no, Keith does it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, the, 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 the book. Uh, from TFC here. I mean, it's it's brilliant. It would make a great TV show or film or, or something, wouldn't it? I mean, it would, it would... I would, yeah. It's a, it's a real life journey, which is what, what we were trying to. Who would like to play you? Um, someone, well, apart from the fact that they'd have to probably gain a few pounds. <laughs> but... <laughs> what was the just done? Someone with empathy. I think Casey Ainsworth. Okay, yeah. She's Casey Ainsworth. She's got empathy. She knows exactly. She knows it. I mean, she's a great charity supporter of ours. She and be... she's a great charity supporter. So there's a double winner. She'd be, she'd be really good. And what about Aston? Did you see, see someone playing Aston? Did you have to see what you Ooh. Yeah, it's got to be someone with rugged good looks. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be great. It would actually make a really good because the stories it would help a lot, a lot, a lot of people um, uh, to, to have the chance to to not only read this, but so so many people enjoy watching the story. It would help them. Yeah, we, we've actually been approached to do a, an audio version of it as well. Oh, brilliant! Which, um, Aston's actually suggested he'd like to do himself, so basically he would record it for me. Um, so I would, I would do the talking, he'd do all the bit in the background because he can do all the technical 
So um, that's an idea. My, my personal opinion, I'd love to see it. That would be my absolute dream is to see the story either on stage or on film because it's, it's a journey that I think everybody can empathise with. It, it doesn't just have to be someone with autism. It needs to be anyone well, that's at a point where they've had to overcome adversity. One of the things I say is you don't have to have uh, you, you don't have to have a, have, have a family member with autism. You just need to have empathy. Uh, and I think it's so important to bring people like me on board because then I bring other people on board and educate them. And everything from, we were talking about racism recently. How do you stop it? And I said, the way is, you know, once you start, once you've learned it, it's very difficult to unlearn. Uh, but it, yeah. everybody's born a racist. Uh, and if you go into the schools, like I go into diversity role models and do LGBT uh, for the schools and talk about it, and Aston goes in and talks about autism. If you hit it right from day one and stop people being, or try and educate them uh, from being being racist, then uh, 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 it's the way forward. Go into the schools and, and teach them about it. Then you won't yeah. have so, much, so many issues. It's are. definitely the way forward, without a doubt. Yeah, you're uh, 100% right. But, uh, as I say, um, just because you're not an autistic person doesn't mean you can't get involved because you haven't got. <laughs> it's a very not safe, at all. you know, um, and, and it's actually more a, a great help to bring people in that, that don't know about it because they go back and tell other people. Well, actually, I've, you've you've really hit on a valid point because when Aston joined Pineapple yeah. for quite some time, we didn't we no one told any of the other students that Aston had autism. But they'd obviously all in within themselves had all picked up that there was something. And then we was at a social event yeah. and one of them come up to me, they'd heard about Aston's autism somehow. Yeah. They'd, and they, they came up to me, there was one particular person that actually called a few more in and said they'd learned so much by just being with Aston and being around him, they'd learn different different things as themselves. Yes. Now yes. that that is so, so like you, you can't put anything on that because they, they found that empathy by just spending time with someone that has difficulties in certain areas. Yeah, absolutely. So you've, you've totally hit on something there. No, no talk, talk about different areas. You're, you're the Queen of Essex. <laughs> what's it, you know, I got this off subject, but what's it, you know, if I, I was come to Essex on a holiday or, or just for a trip, what places would you recommend going to? Quite surprised, actually, apart from our brilliant local pub to gun. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be quite surprised. There's some lovely places. We we like to go with uh, Leon C, the cockle sheds. Yep. Can't be that. <laughs> the train <laughs> is wonderful, isn't it? From uh, if, you, if you get the train uh, from Fenchurch Street down to down the coast, it's a lovely journey, isn't it? There's some beautiful, some lovely places. So. Yep, Leon C is, is always a favourite. You've got Chalkwall, uh, Westcliff, you've got the casinos. Um, you've we, we spend a lot of time, we quite like to go over to Battles Bridge, which yep. has got a lovely um, craft-like antique village. Yep. So there's lots of arts and crafts, and we, we love to have a little wander around there. There's a nice little country pub, sit and have a bit of dinner. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Nice. There's some lovely walks. We yeah, we, we really enjoy it. There's lots of nice places, believe it or not. So what's Aston and you got for the rest of the year? What are you gonna get, get up to? Well, we've got the we've got two AGTs, so we're going to St. Ives with yeah. Anna. Autism's got talent. With the autism's got talent, yep. So we're we're taking the road show with Anna to St. Ives. We're also we've got the main one this year, which is yeah. the 10th anniversary, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's so exciting. The mermaid. Yeah. London, so so. Um, we'll all be together there. I'm definitely at that one. I, I might <laughs> try and come down with you because you promised to bring a bottle of champagne on the train. Oh yeah, you know, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> that would lure me on. Lure me on the train would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're obviously looking as well. We we because of the situation we. Um, we was doing a, a fundraiser last year for the local dance school um, at Halloween. So we had to call that off. We actually ended up doing an online quiz just to raise a few pennies for them, really. So we'll probably look to replace that this year, if all being well with restrictions. And then we've got the Heroes. Yeah, the so Heroes. Yeah. Got the Hero Awards, yes. I'm looking for some good sponsors for that. Should be a bit. Yeah, there's, yeah. 
we're yeah. hoping there's people out there to uh, yeah, get think, more involved. I mean, it's it's definitely what it's, it's an amazing evening anyway, and it's uh, it is. It's cover, uh, it's the, what, oh, we might have a glass of champagne. <laughs> and it's how I see you as a glass of champagne. Listen, uh, uh, when when are you at your happiest, Don? I'm really at my happiest and most most content. This sounds really, but we've had days out with the family. Yeah, myself. Keith, Aston, yeah. my son Aaron, his wife Charlotte and the baby, day yeah. at the zoo, going to a theme park, anything where I'm with my family. Actually, one of my favourite days is they come for dinner. We all have Sunday dinner and we all mooch afterwards. That's probably my happiest place because it's it's a natural thing to do. And, you, you know, it, I like going out. I love socialising, but you can't beat family. Most you, and you are the mum of the year, Don. Uh, <laughs> and you are, and you, you always make us so happy. So thank you so much for giving Bless me your time. You. Uh, the books from Tear to Hear, you can guess from it from online, uh, uh, either on Anna Kennedy online, or uh, you get it on Amazon, can't you? No, no. Right, so the difference between this book and other books is that actually it was sponsored. Yeah. So the sale, so if you go to the Anna Kennedy online website... Or the Team Avery Essex website. Yeah. The book, all proceeds of that book go directly to them charities. So it's it's a book with a difference. We're still giving back. Not well, one penny of that goes anywhere. As you're the Thank you for coming on. Love you lots. Bye. Bye bye.